Hey guys, Totally Randy here from Houston Style Magazine. I know I am in unfamiliar territory, but don't worry, it's Gentleman's History Hour. I am with RJ and EQ, and I'm actually going to be interviewing them today. I wanted to come into their habitat so that I can get all of that good knowledge that they're giving to you guys, so stay tuned. We're gonna be getting, diving right into this, okay? So thank you guys for allowing me to enter your space. Oh, no problem, man. We, we changing the game on podcasting, man. We're getting interviewed on the podcast that. about the podcast. That's yeah. right. That's, it's, it's, yeah. We're doing things different here, yeah. okay? And if this is your first time watching, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Did I, did I do that? Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I second that. Yeah. I second that. Hit that subscribe See? button. Yeah. See, they're, they're, they're in my territory, too. They yeah. just don't know it, all right? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is really, really good. Um, so first of all, just kind of tell everybody what you guys do. What we do in, in what way? Uh, just like what your, what your podcast is about. Oh, the po yeah. okay, podcast wise, um, man, we we have a mission statement and we've been going back and forth. It's like writing our constitution, you know. <laughs> right. We we we've been making amendments to it. Um, but originally, this um this podcast was started as a way of us uh, interacting with people about uh, history, history from the past and um, the context that it has now. And kind of looking at it from what's the problem to what's the solution. One of the problems is um, we don't have casual conversations about history in the same way that we do about hip hop, about sports. Um, so we wanted to kind of bring that into the lexicon of us talking about history and having those casual conversations. So that was one of the problems and we want to be part of the solution. And hopefully this podcast will inspire other people to dig even deeper we just want to scratch the surface enough right, right. we're not trying to give you uh, the whole lecture a whole three-hour cornell west uh right. lecture um but just enough to um get you hungry to want to learn on your own and then see us learning it in real time because we're researching it in real time we're not historians um in the sense of we went to school and got a degree in history Right, you know, I'm but claim, we are historians. Historians, man. We historians, man. So. We histori I just say, but don't speak for him. We, no, uh, no, no, I'm speaking for him. He, he a historian. I but I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm qualifying job. it. I'm qualifying uh, it by um, <laughs> try being humble. Humble get no respect. I but, know that's right. But I'm qualifying it because there are historians that have put in like years definitely, and years of work to become historians right. and exactly, scholars. So right. I don't want to disrespect the title of of a historian because I appreciate that. You know, no, no, yeah. so. And one one other key component to our problem statement is that we don't get our history uh, or edu in education institutions as well. Yeah. So in school we don't learn these things. So we talked about casual conversations, but also yeah. uh, in the school format or an institution of education that we most most of us have come up in. We don't get our history yeah. uh, in, in a thorough way. So, and in that yeah. voice y'all hear, I was just about to say that, that savvy G H H is um one of the podcasts that's on the Pod Network. Okay. So the Pod Network is a, is a springboard. So be on the lookout for uh, other podcasts in the future. Okay. But GHH is the flagship. Gentlemen's History Hour is the flagship under uh, Podden. It's like Podden is the record label. Right. And Gentlemen's History Hour is uh, is one of the artists. So I that's you know that was uh, thank you for segueing. That was my next question. Who came up with this idea and how was it born? Well, some we, we collectively we were, we were like already kind of searching for an, a podcast idea. And then um, originally, pre-pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. we used to uh, meet for happy hour with, with a lot of people who've been guests on the show, Daryl, Aisha, uh, and we would uh, just, you know, our unofficial name is Gentleman's Happy Hour. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's what Rob, Rob would always say, hey man, um, let's meet up for a Gentleman's Happy Hour. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So just over time, you know, uh, with the George Floyd, stuff like that, and then having this, this abundance of, of time and discussing history. Uh, just really discussing history recreationally, like not even something that was being forced to do, not something that was like a goal or anything, just right. in naturally evolving. It just kind of evolved from happy hour to history hour. And yeah. We saw a market that was like potentially, really, that was really untapped. So we just yeah. you know, went definitely ahead and went. untapped. One, I, one of our, our, I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, one no. of our one of our good friends, um, we met. At a gentleman's history hour bar, randomly, we're sitting at the bar and we were discussing Booker T. Washington and W. E. B. Du Bois. Right. Yeah. And um, it was a brother next to us and they, two other brothers, and they kind of got in the conversation. And um, from that conversation of, like we said, changing the narrative of what we talk about right. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So us, and this prior to us even um, having this as a podcast, just having that conversation, we end up uh, meeting a person that's that's a friend of ours and um, is also 
uh, Daryl Lawson, he's a lawyer, so he's a part of uh, some of the programming that we do on Gentleman's History Hour. Okay. So just to, to give a connection of the whole Gentleman's Happy Hour and uh, meeting someone yeah. and then it becoming Gentleman's History Hour and still having that, that close tie. Right. We met from mm -hmm. uh, talking about history. I like that. Yeah. When you yeah. put the, the thing about it, once the vibration goes out, you know, everybody who's on that frequency, they just kind of start appearing. Right. You know, so I think we connected on that vibration. And then he said, everybody who's on that frequency, that's a really great way to say it. everybody who cares. Hmm. No, I'm not, I'm not going to go there, but that's a yeah. really great way to say yeah. that. Oh, yeah, I see know. what you did there, RJ. I oh, you, know, you, I, you know, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of things with these words. <laughs> right. I see that. I was like, okay. What you're yeah. doing now, EQ mentioned that you guys talk uh, about history in a different way, and he he mentioned like you know, in other words, how many times can you 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 talk about the Jay Z and Nas beef, right? Like mm -hmm. they've moved on to something, so you want to talk about history instead of the, like kind of the way we talk about uh, rap, hip hop, yeah. music, uh, movies, like you know the way people have those really great conversation around those things they should be having around history. Now, is it Black history? Is it world history? Is it American history? What type of history? I call it black history. You call it history. Um, yeah. I, I call it um, more so American history, but American history is black. Right. So I don't, you know, I just say it's American history. But he put American a period on that. Is, he put a period. Black. He said American history is black, period. Like, he said that with so much conviction yeah, for all of you out there who are like, well, maybe. No, he said no. American history is black. So it's black, Amer it's American history. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but we do have segments where we we may delve outside of just the American history, but it all ties right. into um, American. I mean, we had a show on the history of Thanksgiving. Right. Yes. Um, but it all is it's gonna tie into us some yeah. kind of way. Right. Because so. what we do, we build this. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So all right. So it's 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 American history you're talking about, and it's not in a McDonald's 365 history kind of way. Right? No, no. So, we don't, so we don't have to have a Black History segment because <laughs> right. we yeah. talk about it all the time. Like we don't have to in February. So GHH presents Black History <laughs> edition. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So give me give give like for those who like those who are on the Totally Randy platform and the Houston Style Magazine platform that have never heard of Gentlemen's History Hour, which you guys should start watching right now. Um, if you have, if they've never heard about it, kind of give them a setup of how your, your podcast go, of how your show goes. I say it really goes to introducing, uh, the subject we'll introduce will be normally something that people, you know, generally have heard about. Um, and then inside of taking that general view of it, then we'll start, you know, exploring it, not just from a macro, but from a micro. And, you know, really try to bring out some key findings that, you know, probably have been overlooked or people didn't know about, you know, and, and a lot of times it's just as surprising to us as, you know, maybe the listener, you know, and it's, it's a lot of, like an example would be in Harlem, um, you know, we referenced in that previous episode, Philip A. Payton Jr. to realize that, hey, and this is a, a black, Harlem was a middle, was a white community that a black guy who started off as a janitor at a realty firm you know, really spearheaded to learn that there was a, a, a black church that, that bought uh, buildings in Harlem and evicted all the white residents. So we'll start from a generally from a, a, a pretty much a pretty popular point, but then we'll take a micro view of it and try to pull out some interesting points or some key points, you know, or one thing EQ is really, really good at is, uh, you know, being able to pull out the the grants or the the uh bills or you know the legal things that were passed that kind of set up the framework for things that happened yeah. i like that and how like w what makes you want to do that or is that just something you did on a frequency like hey i'm always looking into that is that your background or like why do you actually bring those things out um, specifically just, just growing up um reading books mm -hmm. and um as uh as sam said in the beginning um, realizing that um, I had to teach myself a lot of stuff I was untaught. Right. You know, we're kind of like unlearning a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so um, just having that interest in reading and wanting to um, share it, you know, just, just, just to, to share it with other people and having a platform like this, it kind of um, takes it away from us just having this conversation amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. And now it's a platform to share with other people, but um, just a curiosity in, in understanding and looking at a topic and being curious about it. Um, and like you said, how we approach it, 
we had an episode of, about um instead of just talking about the black panthers we talked about huey and bobby the founders of the right. black panthers but in the same we we opened it up with saying they're it's hip hop dynamic duos like Hemp C and Bun, <laughs> yeah, Outkast, yeah. Big Boy and like Andre. That. I like that. But we yeah. got Huey and Bobby. Right. Um, and you know the, the the pleasure in doing a show like this is I brought that up because um, in our hip hop realm because we like music and we like hip hop too. Um, one of uh, one of the guys that raps, a younger guy, Flag of Woods, he tagged us uh, from that episode. We mentioned the book that Bobby Steele wrote. Mm -hmm. He went and, you know, he got that book and he showed us like, hey, from watching that episode, it, right. so it, it has, uh, it has its, its purpose. If it's one or two people, then I'm like, we're doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah. And it's empowering too, you know, I say. Because I was going to ask, I was going to ask you, RJ, like, what are something, like, does it touch you to a point where you're like, man, I never knew that. Like, how does it have, how does it affect you personally? when you go over these topics or when you delve into to history and you look at certain things that you never knew before? I say, you know, certain, not everybody, but certain characters, just like, just like in rap or anything else, you know, there's certain stories of different people that, you know, you start, you start really identifying with, you know, right. and then when you identify with the person the same way, like if you identify with a rapper or something and, you know, they got music or they got something that just touches you, you can lean on for inspiration it becomes a lot, it becomes very empowering to be able to have, you know, ancestors or, you know, people who've come before you where, you know, if I like, in, and feeling like, hey, you know what, you know, I need to attack this, all right, fine, you know, what would he we do? That's a real question I ask myself now, you know, because I really, I really admire uh, his basically willingness to just do whatever it takes, you know, to, to be supremely prepared for something. So like, I, I think, Overall, that's really the impact, uh, more, more so on a tangible day-to-day -day level that I feel like I, I've had. And also sometimes learning the humanity, learning the flaws in a person, you know, that uh, also, you know, really empowers because it, it reminds you that, hey, you know, MLK wasn't a perfect man. I don't have to be a perfect man to be able to, you know, do my part and contribute. So for me, it's just learning the stories uh, and the humanizing of them you know, it, it helps me just kind of see opportunity in my life day to day. I yeah. like that. I like that a lot. Now, has it ever had a, the effect on you? Because I'm going to give you an example. Um, Malcolm X would have been 96 years old. Uh, I want to say May 19th. May 19th, yeah. right, which was yesterday. He would have been 96 years old. So a lot of people were coming out with like different facts about about them. And because of my work, I had to list a couple of facts on him. And one of the things I found was that <laughs> a lot of people think the feds were watching when he was already in Islam, but actually the feds were watching before he even converted to Islam because he wrote a letter to the president stating that he was a communist because he didn't believe in, in war and, you know, so mm -hmm. they were already watching. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I was like, I wonder, had he not done that, would they have turned a blind eye when he was, you know, knowing that he was getting ready to be assassinated? That's a great question. You know, I, I wonder sometimes about Have you ever had Islam. those type of effects? Have history or learning about? Oh yeah, like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Uh, all the time. I wonder a lot of times. I've had the same question about Islam, where it's like, if you took away the nation of Islam, you took away the black element. I wonder. I sometimes wonder what, how would Islam be viewed? Would it be kind of a a thing where it's maybe like an indifference, maybe the way that like Hinduism is viewed? You know, well, I would, well, well, just not to interrupt, but we do have a version of that in Orthodox Islam. Yeah, so we do have Orthodox Islam, but but even Islam in and of itself, it, just the black element that was added to it with the nation. So even when, even Islam, if you take the nation away, there's still, in my opinion, there still is a, a level of blackness that you would think of Islam because you, you have a reference point of right. uh, activities that we've done involved in it. So sometimes I do think of like, okay, what take that away. How would Orthodox Islam be be viewed if it was just something that had nothing to do with black folks? And I don't know, you know, but yeah. really, it's a good question, I guess, or good, you know. So you guys have the, those takeaways. Look at yeah, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just trying to, I'm, I, I don't understand. I'm, I mean, uh, 
I'm trying to Seems understand like the question. He thought like he <laughs> okay, so yeah. you, so your question was, what if Malcolm didn't have write that letter? How much? Yeah, I was would saying like I, to to me like when I come across like because you guys do history. Not all not the your time. question. I was so, his question. No, I was so confused my, about. What, my response was what I thought was a correlation of your question. Like, okay. how would Islam be viewed if if black people hadn't attached themselves to it? Like, would it just be viewed as another religion? Oh, you know, I that, what That's what saying. I was saying. I may have not, you know, worded it uh, clearly. I get what you're saying. I think some people do, because I, I view uh, Islam as another religion. I mean, it you know, in the Middle East, it's Islam. Um, here, it's the nation of Islam. And so I, I just literally view it as any other uh, Christian like like not any other Christian religion, obviously. I view it as Christian religions. Like you have Catholicism and you have, you know, non denomination, you have Baptist, but they're all Christian. Whereas in Islam you have have those who, who teach, you know, Islam and you have the nation. It's just a, a segment of of Islamic religion. That's how I view it. What about you guys? Oh, Which no, that wasn't supposed to be. We're, <laughs> we we yeah, literally that. and and that actually brings me back to a great question. How do you not go left? How do you not go left when you're when you're actually talking about history? There's so many ways to open Pandora's um, box. How do you well, not do that? To answer that question, one thing about history that's fact and there's opinion. But with history, history has proven that you can go back and fact check. Right. So the research is what keeps it from going left. The okay. research is, is, is what qualifies it. So you guys lean it's heavily the, the on fact and you don't really delve so much into your opinion. Sometimes we kind of like flush out things. You know, I think as, over time we've gotten you know, better at it. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, kind of go into topics with, with a, somewhat of a strategy, you know, where it's like, hey, if we want to, if I know that, okay, you know, he's researched and really d dive deep on these particular, you know, subjects, then I'll try to more so you throw pretty much throw him open to really elaborate on his point or if it's vice versa if it's something like I want to make sure we touch on this this and this mm -hmm. so it does it I mean that I'm not gonna we're not it looks like we're just freestyling and we are freestyling but there is some some preparation work that goes into it you know um right. you know we're not just you know, end of a day. All right, yeah, let's link up and just talk about it. All right, know, let's talk about it. There's prep that goes. Yeah. Okay, I like that. And I know I'm not going to hold you guys. Uh, so I have like just a couple more questions. I want to know, like, how has Gentlemen's History Hour affected you guys? Affected your lives? I oh, mean, my DMs is popping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Now, is that because of the, the history hour or, you know? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just lighting they, in the mood. I'm well, just, are I'm they, are they sending the you book like, emojis? Like, we yeah, trying to I, learn. Before I knew him, before I knew him personally, I used to call him like, man, yeah, man, that Denzel dude. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's how I used to refer to him. No, him. it's, um. That's hilarious. Um, but how has it changed? Yeah, how has it um, changed? Like, how has Gentleman's History Hour changed your lives? Like, has it had, has it had an effect on your lives? Yeah, it's, um, it's brought me back to, um, like, being in school again. Um, and um, it's changed. One thing is it's done. It's um it's made me not take anything for granted. Um, cause when you study in history and and looking at books, um, I'm like, man, I can't take anything for granted. Cause a lot of the the people that paved the way prior to me being here, the, the shoulders that I stand on, they didn't waste any time. Right. Um. So it's brought me more discipline to answer that question. I have to find books I have to research instead of going out sometimes I got to do homework yeah so it has brought more discipline to me I like that abnegation yeah, I'll say it just changed prior to conversation because I look at like things that used to time that used to be spent maybe discussing you know like a game or you know an album you know I still talk an album and stuff but there, it's a lot more conversation just day to day about history, about, you know, like earlier today, I was t texting one of my friends who, uh, he's from Nebraska, and I was like, hey, did you know there was a race ride in Nebraska? So when I leave here, I'll probably link with him and we'll probably discuss that. So it's really changed, I say for me, it's really changed my conversation day to day. 
Um, what was your conversation yeah. like before? Yeah, you know, LeBron. <laughs> oh, skip, skip Bayless. Skip Bayless. Y'all saw that three though. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and we're not set. Yeah. We're not going left. I yeah. mean, come on, it's King yeah. James. But but it, but it's amazing now that that you say that um, that a show like like that they can talk about the same thing every yeah. day. Right. Every single day. Yeah, you know. And then crazy thing about it is, <laughs> I always think it's funny. You're watching people talk about a game that you already saw. Yeah. Like you saw the yeah. game. It's not even like they tell yeah. you something. It's not like the days where there was a broadcast delay. Yeah. Like, right. You know, yeah, I'm like, so, we sit here, we go out our way trying to come up with creative, you know, yeah. historical topics or link it to the present. I'm like, man, these guys on sports, they can talk about the same top. ESPN plays the same thing every day, every day. But they're so know. passionate, like you said, and it becomes it, be, it becomes like they're passionate, so they study it. Yeah. So that's interesting you said that. So where where do you guys see the podcast going? Where do you want it to go? Where do you want to take it? Um, one is um, to get to the level of where um, people view this podcast in the same way that they view a lot of the pop culture type podcasts. Um, we went into this with a rebellious spirit mm -hmm. of knowing that this isn't the most popular thing to do with right. Gentleman's History Hour. Right. Um, as opposed to... Uh, coming in and interviewing, you know, all the Houston rappers that <laughs> are talking about the same stuff that everyone else talks about. Yo, Rob, what's up, man? Did you listen yeah. to the new J. Cole album? Yo, what yeah. you think about it, man? You know, and, right. and not to knock that, but we felt like... Um, relationships? Oh, our relationships. But we felt like we have enough of that. So right. we were trying to fill a void. We felt like, like, the com like Rob said, the conversation started to change, and we wanted to introduce the people to our conversations changing and hopefully it'll inspire other people. Not saying that we don't have fun. Yeah, right. we do have those kind of conversations, but not as much. I used to spend a lot of time, and one thing to answer how it changed, um, I used to spend a lot of time, and, and Sav understands it because we're in a music group as well, talking about music, like hours and hours and hours and hours. I'm like, man, I, and then I, I started losing track of what I was learning prior to just talking about music all the time. I was like, why can't I talk about Malcolm X the same way that I know who Nas is? Why can't I quote Malcolm the way I quote Nas? Right. Why can't I quote Garvey the same way I quote Jay-Z? Why can't, like, you know, if I know the stats on uh, LeBron or Michael Jordan, how can I not know the stats on other things that happen to us historically outside of just the realm of entertainment? Um, so, you know, it was just um, hopefully it catches on and it'll inspire a young person that's yeah, one not, not a hopefully it's, it's gonna be it's yeah it will on, you know, yeah so it's to inspire on. a young person can say um just like my guy flagger woods hey from watching this show it inspired me to dig a little deeper and maybe the next um just like in entertainment you have the next lebron that said he watched michael jordan or the next whoever the next Malcolm can say, I was inspired from watching Gentleman's History Hour. Right. Yeah. Right. And what do you guys want the audience to know? Like, this is your time to, like, just tell the audience everything you want them to know about Gentleman's History Hour, just just anything you want to say that you feel we haven't touched on about this podcast. Because oh, it's so much, it's so needed. Mine is quick, man. I just want y'all to subscribe. Right. <laughs> You and know, hop in the DMs because they're popular. No, 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 no. That was that a means joke. he's single. Ladies. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Which no, camera is mine? Oh. Where is it? Where is nah, it? don't give me a trouble, right here, man. Right here. Right here. Ladies. No, nah, right. I, right. nah, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say. I didn't say I was single. He was like hopping in the DMs. Nah, see, that's how rumors get. Now, now I'll be on the rumor report. If you're not married, you're single, ladies. I'm not even over there right now. Oh shit, I'm off. I'm off. Nah. Hey, I love it. No, but more, more seriously, I do want to manifest the, the GHH college tour and the GHH yeah. academic tour. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to speak that into existence, you know, yeah. for, for 2022. Yeah. Let's get yeah. that rolling. Yeah. So all the colleges, universities, high schools, middle schools, elementary schools. I like to call them historically black elementary schools. Yeah. 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 Historically yeah. black middle schools. Yeah. 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 HBCUs yeah. and so yeah. on and so forth, man. Yeah. Give us a shout, man. We could come and do a, a lecture and all that for you. Or not a lecture. We could do a panel or just a discussion or episode live on your yeah. campus. You want to make that happen for the next year. And we That's just amazing. keep getting better at it, too. Like, yeah. you know, now we evolved. We just started doing the sessions, uh, which is like a shorter, um, you know, short form content. Uh, you know, and then we are taking like deeper dives on specific subjects, uh, like the work that uh, EQ and uh, Fred, who's also another uh, contributor, are doing with the, the story of the Moor. So I think, you know, the thing about it is it's a journey. So 
you know, we're still getting better at what we do and getting better at delivering the information. You know, it may evolve into, you know, all type of different formats. Um, but that's one thing I think we, we are committed to the cause and, you know, and figuring out the best way to execute that, you know, but it's a, it's a real duty. Uh, and we're choosing this, you know, because like you said, we could, you know, we easily can quintuple our numbers tomorrow. If we sit up here and, you know, give our best Kevin Samuels impersonation, right. but you know, right. we committed to our purpose. So I love that and stay grounded and committed. Uh, you guys, team style Mag, I really, really appreciate you guys rocking with me. These guys are amazing. These gentlemen, so sorry about that, Saf. He's going to kill me back there. <laughs> um, these guys are amazing. Please subscribe. What you're learning here is it's unmatched what they do with this podcast. And I haven't researched to see if there are any other historically, you know, uh, built podcasts like this. But I know when I first ran across it, I was like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. They're different. And I promise I wasn't in his DMs. But no, on a serious note, thank you guys for rocking with Randy. It's always a pleasure to be amongst brilliance. And you guys are brilliant. Thank y'all for having me. Uh, thank you. That? Thank you. Yeah. See the Gentleman's History Hour. Tune in. Yeah. Pod and platformation, y'all. <laughs>